It's July 24th, 2010, about nine in the morning. We're in Montreux, Switzerland, and every morning I get up, go to my window, switch on my video camera, select a time-lapse mode, and I turn it on. I don't know what the day will offer, but I will undoubtedly find out. I wash, dress, and walk to my office. I set up a small advertising agency a few years ago. We do a lot of corporate videos. After years of drawing storyboards for various small and giant ad agencies, I now can film my own commercials, make my own ideas come to life. So now, at my little shop, we create and produce all sorts of movies. Today we had a shoot scheduled. So me and my young director, Ilario, went to film women doing an aerobics video. Elario did most of the work, and after the shoot, we went to visit his father, who had a studio nearby. I had never met his father, but had heard a lot about him. Cornelius Rickman greeted us in his underwear at the entrance of his studio. He was fixing his doorbell. Once inside, it was pure bliss. Cornelius Rickman is a sculptor. His studio is filled with wooden sculptures, religious arts, books, pictures, frames. We snake through the aisles of years of relic, assaulted with rich imagery. Cornelius came out of his kitchen dressed and armed with a bottle of red wine. We hesitated, he insisted, so we easily gave in. The wine was sweet and allowed me to absorb more of this fascinating man than just the alcohol. But work was calling, so we headed back. Ilario immediately started editing his aerobics video, and I went to work on my hotel school project. As usual, the phone rang. Requests were made, small meetings were held, and eventually I went back home. My wife was busy packing for her sabbatical departure to Mexico. She was excited and deeply sad. But she had decided to go out for six months to paint and change her routine. It has been 30 years of communal life. Our three children have grown up. And I was busy with my new agency to be a proper partner to my wife. And she is resentful. And so she went on packing and prepared to leave. I went to my camera, played back the day from my window, which I had not seen. Time flies. The world spins and we just go on with our days. I wish that my camera had been capable of recording the past hundred million years, right from this window, so that I could see the mountains slowly breathe one thousand years at a time, see them roll over as they sleep and awake. I believe the planet lives and breathes as I do, and I am just a small microbe scuttering along its skin for just a tiny instant. So tomorrow I will turn on my camera again, come home, and see what I missed from my window and wonder.